Hello guys, today we will be understanding about data types in Python. We will understand what are data types and we will also look the various data types that are present in Python. Earlier we have discussed that when we write a program we always manage data. Either we create some new data, we use that data, we modify that data and at last we delete that data. This is known as CRUD operation. So we create data. CRUD stands for create, read, update and delete. So we create data, we read that data, we update that data and at last we modify that data. So in our program we are always managing the data Now let us understand what are data types in Python. Data type defines the type of the data that will be stored in the memory. So using the data type we can define what type of data we want to be stored in the memory. In Python we have various data types like integer type, float data type, we have boolean data type and finally we have string data type. Let us understand each of the data types. Let's understand what are integer data types. We use integer data types to store numbers like positive numbers, zero and negative numbers. So we can store information like someone's age, number of students in a classroom, number of employees that are working in an office. So we can store numbers using integers like 20,500, 0, minus 10, minus 1, minus 676. So using integer type, we can store positive numbers 0 and negative numbers. The next data type is float data type. We use float data type to store floating point numbers. Now let us understand what are floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are those numbers that contains decimal point in them. So you can store numbers like the approximate value of pi which is 3.14 the square root of 2 which is approximately 1.44 the salary of an employee suppose someone is earning around 30,056 dollars per annum so we use float data type to store numbers that contain decimal points in them the next data type that we have is boolean data type Now boolean data type can store only two types of values. It can store either true or false. So it can store true or false. We can use boolean data type to store information like whether a person is married or not. If he is married, it will be true. If he is not married, it will be false. We can store information like whether a person is graduate or not. If he is graduate, it is true, otherwise it will be false. We can store information like whether a product has a defect or not. If it has any defect, it will be true. If it does not have any defect, it will be false. So Boolean data type can store only two type of values. It can store either true or false. The next data type that we have is string data type. Now we have earlier used string data type. Let us understand what are string data types. We use string data type to store sequence of characters. So when we want to store bunch of characters, we will be using this string data type. Now we can use string data type to store information like someone's name. We can store their address using string data type. We can store messages using string data type.
So when we want to store sequence of characters, we use string data type. So we write, we use double quotes in order to enclose sequence of characters. Instead of double quotes, you can also use single quotes. So these are the various data types that are present in Python. We have an integer type that stores positive numbers, zero and negative numbers. Then we have float data type that stores floating point numbers. Floating point numbers are the numbers that contains decimal point in them. Next we learned about Boolean data types. Boolean data type can only store two types of values. It can either store true or it can either store false. Then we learned about string data type. We use string data type to store sequence of characters. So when we want to store bunch of characters, we will be using string data type. Remember we have discussed earlier that when we write a program, we are managing data. The main purpose of a program is to manage the data efficiently. Now we will write a small program to manage employees data. Now let's think the information that we will be storing regarding an employee. We will be storing employee name. Suppose the employee name is Napoleon Hills. Then we will be storing the employee age. Suppose this employee is around 43 years old. Then we will be storing whether the employee is married or not. Now suppose this employee is married, so we are storing true. Now let's store whether the salary that this employee is earning. Now let us assume this employee is earning somewhere around $30,056 per annum. Then let's store information regarding the department in which this employee is working. Suppose this employee is working in the HR department. So here we are storing information regarding an employee. Now let's pay some close attention to this program. Here I have created a variable name employee name. Now I have used snake case in order to name this variable because in Python we use snake case to name our variables. In snake case we separate multiple words using an underscore. So I have stored the employee name is Napoleon Hills and this is string data type. In string data type we store sequence of characters that are uh, stored inside this double quotes. Next we are storing the employee age which is 43 and this is integer data type. Next we are storing whether the employee is married or not and this is true. This is boolean type it can either be true or false. Then we are storing the salary which this employee is earning. He is earning somewhere around $30,056 per annum. Now this is float, float data type. See we in float data type we have decimal point in the number. Then we are storing the employee department. This is string data type. Now let's run the program. When we run the program, we can see it is displaying some error to us. This error has occurred in line 19. So at this point, it has, there, there is some error. So it is telling that uh, it cannot understand what is true. And it is also suggesting that did we mean true with capital letter T and so when we create your boolean variable the first letter has to be in capital so the true has to start with a capital T if the employee 
is not married you can store false see here f has to be capital now if we run our program you can see we are not getting any error it is not displaying any output this is because we we are not displaying any output using print statement so here we have written a small program to store the information regarding unemployed now you have to understand that this variable is just pointing to the block of memory where this information is stored so variable just points to the block of memory where information is stored it is actually data type that defines what type of data will be stored in the memory let us understand this with an example in this figure suppose this is our ram and uh, this much portion is the memory that is allocated for our python program by the operating system to run now you will notice that variables are pointing to the block of memory where information is stored see this variables are pointing to the block of memory where information is stored but it is actually data type that defines what type of data will be stored in this block see this is string data type we have integer we have float and boolean data types so variables just point to the block of memory but it is actually data type that defines what type of data will be stored in the memory here we have written a small program where we are storing the information regarding an employee if you notice we have created a variable and assigned some value to it we have not mentioned any data type while creating our variable python interpreter is smart enough that based on this data it will automatically identify that it is string data type and according to that it will allocate memory for it that is why python is called dynamic programming language because we do not mention data type while creating our variable in programming languages like c c++ or java when we declare a variable we have to also mention its data type that's why programming languages like c c++ or java they are known as static programming language because when we create a variable we have to mention their data type but python is called dynamic programming language we do not mention any data type here python interpreter is smart enough that based on the data it will automatically identify that data type of that and according to that it will allocate memory now let's revise what we have learned in today's session today we learned about data types that are in python we understood what are data types and we looked at various data types that are present in python we learned about integer type then we learned about float type then we saw boolean type then we understood what are string types now integer float boolean and string these are known as fundamental data types you can also called primitive data types now in python we have various other data types also which we will cover in future session then we wrote a small program where we store information regarding an employee i hope you found this session useful thank you